So what we've seen so far that is occurring is um, they've been using objects to break out several um, windows to businesses. Um, that we have had reports of looting. We've seen um, we've had uh, numerous buildings, businesses on Shattuck and Telegraph that have been damaged or looted. Um, businesses such as uh, Sprint, AT and T. We've had several banks affected um, as well, and um, also a Radio Shack that was actually hit twice tonight, and that was one of the businesses where the protester was injured when he was trying to protect the business. Mostly uh, racial, tension, racial tensions have been heating up, uh, obviously since uh, what was happening in uh, Ferguson, Missouri, uh, and now you've got Eric Garner. Now what's interesting about Eric Garner is that actually happened at the beginning of July, but we've seen protests, die-ins for instance, where people pretend to lie down or have t-shirts with I can't breathe put on uh, the fronts of them, but it's stoking all this tension. So joining us, Bob Parks is a U.S. political expert, black and right, and uh, Bob, uh, I. I get the sense, I mean, Eric Garner was back in July. They're using this as an excuse. What do you think? Well, these protests, when you look at the, the protests that have, that have happened in the United States over the years and the media's portrayal of them, they usually use the, the code words, mostly peaceful, which means that there may have been a little bit of violence, but we're not going to mention that. These protests always ramp up, whether it's the World Trade Organization, the, the infamous World Trade Organization uh, protests that turned very violent as far as the, the damage and looting that went on, the damage to business properties. You have groups in this country that uh, thrive on that kind of thing, and they look for an excuse. Uh, they're called black bloc groups, and they infiltrate what might be pre-peaceful protests. And then once the police go or, or, or set to one area, then they will commence to create all kinds of mayhem and, ha and havoc. It happens almost all the time. And it was only a matter of time before they infiltrated this group and used it as an excuse. This is sort of the ultimate flash mob that they use the same tactics that they used to use for fun to go out and meet at a certain place and have a big snowball fight, for example. But now they're using they're using the Garner and uh, the Brown protest as an excuse to go out and just be punk kids. That's basically what it is. Well, and, and to be fair, Bob, we've seen this in Canada related to uh, hockey games, for goodness sake. It happened in Vancouver. It's happened in Montreal uh, over the years when there were actually celebrations going on, and people use that as an excuse to break windows. It's not unique to the United States. The difference, I think, this time is it highlights uh, two things in my mind, the jury system, the grand jury system in the United States, and then any sort of racial tension uh, as a reason. Let's just focus on the grand jury issue. What do you make of the two incidents where grand juries have made rulings, and then you get these reactions? Well, you know, there are mixed feelings when it comes to both of the, you know, the Michael Brown, the Eric Garner grand juries, two, to you know, two basically totally different um, outcomes. And since we weren't privy to the hours of testimony, we can read about it, but we can't see everything that was presented. To come on and try to, to take a side, I think would be irresponsible, since I haven't seen it. But when it comes to the, the subsequent protests, um, Laura Erickson and myself, with, uh, we, we represent Black and Blonde Media, we went out the first night of the Washington, D.C. protest. And what we saw were initially people who wanted to protest then turned into we want to disrupt we want to bully we go we are going to walk down the streets in washington dc and i'm just speaking for the, for our area because we, we've also seen the video new york city los angeles san francisco oakland but they purposefully walked into traffic came up to a major intersection made a huge circle to block it, and their main purpose was to inconvenience people. This was what they considered their protest uh, for racial injustice, racial inequality, but they are purposefully disrupting. And there was one gentleman that we got on videotape who got out of his car to say, what's going on? And one of the protesters started screaming, agitator, and, and had everybody swarm this person, and they were telling him to get back in his car. So they did not want 
dissent. They did not want a differing of opinion. They didn't want anybody to say, hey, what are you doing blocking traffic? These are bullies. It started out as a protest. They tried to, co- they to uh, compare themselves to the civil rights era type protest. Those were done with permits. Those were done in coordination with the police. The police knew where the routes were so they could divert traffic. These are mobs that are moving around at random. Some it, it may seem random. Let me take that back. They knew where they were going. They were making split decisions on where to redirect where their protests were going for the express purposes of disruption and inconvenience of the general public. This is not. This is now more into just uh, punk activity. It is no longer a civil rights demonstration. Well, yeah, exactly the point. Because when you look at this thing, they fly under the banner of free right of association and free right of speech, but they want to disrupt everybody else. How quickly can the U.S. shut this down, if at all? Um, it can only be shut down if the if the United States government, Barack Obama, Eric Holder, wanted it to be shut down. But when you look at uh, those two individuals, you look at uh, Mayor de Blasio, who is basically a sympathizer, it's not going to shut down unless the, 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 the main figureheads, you're, you're talking Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson, who also brought themselves into it. They say no violence, but they're, they're not telling people to stop it. They say they don't want it. They're not telling people to stop it. And so it's not going to stop until the, the, the figureheads of the quote-unquote movement step in. And I feel, I feel that this is just what they want. They want this kind of Saul Alinsky-type disruption um, and inconveniencing of the... And you're polarizing the American people. People who are sympathizing with these causes are now starting to have second thoughts yeah. because of the actions of these protesters. Yeah, absolutely. Bob, great to chat. Thanks so much. Have a great week. Thanks, Thanks for having me, Pat. Bob Parks, blackandbright.com.